We're going to talk about writing files in a minute, but first I want to talk about some of this try catch that it may be getting annoying because it starts to add a lot of logic and I'm not really do if any of these exceptions actually happen, my code's really not going to run anyways. Like for example, if I can't open this file, uh, I'm gonna, I can't if file 2 is not created properly or open properly, like I can't read from it, so none of the other code makes sense to run. So what I'm going to do is just delete the try catch, which will cause some problems, but just wait for a minute. We'll deal with them. Or actually, we won't deal with them, and that'll be even more fun. Okay, so I just deleted the try catch, and of course we get that warning, unreported exception. So what we did before was uh, use a try catch, either surround the statement or surround the block with the try catch. Those are reasonable to do. What I didn't do is add throws clause. So I'm gonna try this option right here. What this means is that if this exception occurs, I'm not gonna do anything to, about it. I'm just gonna let this uh, program just stop running. And that's exactly what we're choosing right here. And now I clicked on it and look, nothing happened. Something did happen, but nothing happened here. So if this, act this line 45 causes an exception, Line 46 does not get executed. What happens is it's almost like a return occurred and it's gonna stop the execution. And where this code got modified is way up at the beginning of the method. It just adds a throws file not found exception, which means this main method will terminate and it will throw an exception. We'll see it in the output and our code will just stop running. I'm gonna play the same game here with this try catch. So I'm just deleting line 27 and I'm gonna take out this entire catch and there's somewhere there's a closing, I thought there was a closing brace, but maybe I'm just crazy. I'm gonna format Alt Shift F. <clears throat> All right, but now we have an unreported uh, exception because I just deleted the try catch uh, and we're gonna add a throws clause right here. So again, that added it to here. So there's a file not found exception and or an IO exception. Either of those could be thrown. I'm not gonna deal with them and my code will just stop running and that's okay too. So for our purposes, I think throwing these exceptions up here is totally fine. It makes the body of this method a lot more simple. There's just less going on and for, for us, for when you're learning, that's a very reasonable thing to do. If you're creating uh, uh, an application that's gonna run, especially one that's gonna run for long periods of time, you don't want it to be interrupted, you want to handle your exceptions, then this may not be the best way to deal with them. Certainly not in the public static void main. Maybe if this method calling is calling other methods, they may throw the exception, it'll come back to this method and I could deal with it in this method. But for now, this syntax, just it just cleans up what's actually happening inside here. Okay, we're about to start writing. All right, so how have we written before? How have we outputted before? We've done system out and then we use print, println, I've used a little bit of printf. There's plenty of other methods system out uses. We've used system out before. Now, I didn't actually talk about what system out is. So we're about to find, figure that out. There's a few ways to do it. You could type system dot, and here is out with a brief description of what it is. It's a print stream right there. Uh, and where you should look is where I have the cursor here where it says print stream. So it's public static final print stream. So we've been dealing with a print stream object for a long time in Java class. So let's just keep going with the print stream object. There's a few other ways to do it. I could do, um, I could just set a variable equal to it. Now I didn't declare the variable and now I can use the, uh, auto uh, correct option here, or I should say the suggested option here, create local variable, and it'll create a local variable of the correct type. So I need to create a print stream, 
But instead of doing it on system out, so let's call it a P for print stream equals, so of course we go new print stream. Okay, in the constructor, you need to put something in here. One option is, I think you can go with, no, no, system out is a print stream. That's weird, they let us do that. All right, that's not what I want though. I want to build a print stream. Now here you can see all the constructors. I know that font's a little bit small. So just reading down here, I don't want to move the mouse because I think it'll disappear off the screen. But if you look close to the bottom of this list, the third from the bottom, it says you can put a file in. The fourth from the bottom is a file in a string and then a file in a char set. Uh, I'm not going to worry about any of the character encodings here. Uh, that's outside the scope of this uh, video for sure. But we're just going to put the file in. Of course, which one are we going to put in? Let's put in file two. Okay, so now we have a print stream created around file two. Now, previously I showed you how to output what's inside the file. We did that down here. I'm just going to take that space out. All right, so let's load this file up with stuff. So p dot. All right, so this is uh, all the methods that a print stream can do. Now I already put stuff in that file, so let's just go with the old school print. P dot print. All right, we'll put some cool stuff. So I just printed some cool stuff. Uh, now we gotta be careful. Look at that. We're about to open the file a second time. That's not good. We need to not have the file open if we're gonna open it again. So P dot, look at that. We can do P dot close. All right, so that should close the, this closes the print stream, so then the scanner can now access the file. I'm a little nervous if we take out the close, what'll happen. We'll do that in a minute and have some fun and see what happens. And I really wanna go back to has next line because that output for us is more useful. And it, remember I ran it twice. So I printed stuff, cool stuff twice. All right, look at that. It, all that content that I spent time writing in there is gone. Now, I didn't close the tacos are good.txt, so let's copy this and then I'm going to close it. And I'm going to open that tacos are good. And look at that. All that content is gone. You could, of course, paste it back in, but it's gone. So I'll put some of those things back in, and let's go ahead, just label, maybe line zero, line one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, save. All right, see what's in here. Now, <clears throat> if I, I'm going to comment out all this print stuff. So we're not going to actually, this is modifying the file. If we run it, we should just see the file printed on the screen. There we go. That's what we expected to see. So now I'm going to uncomment this. Where This actually edits the file. It writes to the file. So the file is going to change. The output is going to look different. Let's run it again. There we go. I printed some cool stuff and that's all that's in the file now. All the other items are gone. All those beautiful line numbers, they're all gone. And maybe that's not what you want. Maybe you don't want to overwrite everything in the file, which is exactly what happened here. So I'm going to save this again. And what we're going to do in the next video is appending instead of overwriting.